<laughs> Finally, they're making a huge impact on our society that we don't fully understand. Are you someone that looks at this and says, hey, maybe the government needs to scrutinize this? Like, what's the next step? I wouldn't say scrutinize it. I would say break up the companies immediately. That's and more than start scrutiny, putting people right? On trial. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I, I feel that way. Google isn't a monopoly, then maybe we should redefine the term. And he's like, oh, no, it's the, it's the free market. If you just throw the term free market at a conservative, it's like kryptonite. To Superman, it's like, no, I'm melting. Stop, right. free market. I'm not right. against that. It's like, I don't care about your. If this is a free, this is a free market. Google's a free market. No, it's not. Yeah. It's a totally creepy monopoly. Well, I... Very thought-provoking commentary from Tucker Carlson nearly two years ago. Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Ugradowski of We Are Change. That are again, if you remember, watching this channel for over a decade now. All the way back since 2008, we have been warning you about big tech monopolies. And it definitely seems like today we have crossed the Rubicon and reached the point of no return, especially when it comes to big tech tech censorship. Many journalists, myself included, have a very tough decision to make right now, and it's not an easy one. We could either decide to report on the news, the facts, espouse our opinions on it, and risk utter destruction by the big tech monopolies for doing so. Or we could decide to shill and to self-censor ourselves where we ignore the story and we don't talk about it so we could make it another day. And of course, here as an independent media organization that has been around for over a decade we're going to do what we always do and we're going to report the news and the facts as we see it and two weeks before a major presidential election a supreme court confirmation we have twitter and facebook going out on a full outright digital suppression and purge to kill a story about one of the presidential candidate's son seen with a crack pipe and accused of selling access to his father the former vice president of the united states and of course brave journalists there to talk about this story even though they're getting censored because of it while others literally go on divisive shameful diatribes about absolute nonsense yes this is a recent article from the guardian that is literally choosing to talk about fried chicken and how one of their mentally deranged writers is afraid of it. Meanwhile, we are on the precipice of free speech being entirely eroded and done with. You would think you would have some priorities here, and sadly, some journalists are just absolutely shameful today. And again, before we even deep dive into the story, I can't tell you guys enough how important it is to sign up on our email list. Once you sign up on our email list, there is no middleman. There is no boundary. There is no algorithm. There is nothing standing in the way of me and you communicating one on one. Sign up on our email list. It is more important than ever. Also, because we are 100% demonetized, we have a t-shirt store where you could still represent political ideas and not be censored. Yes, this is still one of the sure ways where you could send out a political message and it doesn't get destroyed by the big tech monopolies. We also made a special tribute shirt to the moment that we are all in right now, of course, paying homage to 1984, Brave New World, and Fahrenheit 451. So yeah, I would say that is fairly accurate of a depiction. If you enjoy what we are doing and want to support us and also get out important messages to the general public, check out our merchandise store where we have more than just shirts. And we also have a lot of creative expressions of our merchandise which you could <laughs> get in many forms now i think it's very fair to say that the, what just happened within the last few moments absolutely or extremely way more powerful than any kind of russian collusion meddling accusations that we've been hearing from the last four years and it all started after a massive leak of private emails and photos from the vice president's son Hunter Biden. And this man definitely looks like a troubled individual. There's a lot of frivolous details about his personal life that I don't think is worth getting into. Someone's personal life is their own personal life, and, and that's just my particular preference on this kind of reporting. But we also did find out a large number of emails that are very eye-opening and contradictory to what we heard previously from the former vice president and now presidential candidate, Joe Biden. Those are issues that are far more important 
Then, of course, some scandalous photos of the vice president's son. That really doesn't matter here. And any news surrounding this is being absolutely censored on Twitter and Facebook, even including big media organizations like the New York Post and their reporting on this actual issue, which is being absolutely outright banned on big tech media platforms. A lot of it you can't find, but you are seeing a lot of individuals being censored and even having their accounts restricted, locked down, or deleted for reporting on it. Now, Facebook and Twitter even admitted that it's reducing the distribution of this actual news story and now is even going as far as to censor Congress and their hearings regarding this particular issue. Trump's presidential campaign was even locked by Twitter for reporting on this news. All the while, hashtag Eric Trump Ukraine scandal was trending on Twitter. Yes, a big bombshell story that contradicts a lot of the things that the former vice president joe biden now the presidential candidate said before is being outright whitewashed and deleted from social media or outright lied about by other big media outlets like the washington post and other internet rags that are literally bold-faced lying about this issue with no facts merits or even evidence presented at all and it definitely looks like the gop and the new york post are finally getting a treatment of what independent media has been going through for over a decade we have to understand this is nothing new the boiling frog analogy is perfect here because if we look at what's been happening here it's always been independent media that's been getting screwed by big tech monopolies and we were outright screaming about it making as much noise about it as we could meanwhile there was actual radicals and abusers of children that were still allowed to be on the platform but big tech's first target was of course independent media and now the gop the new york post finally are getting a taste of what's actually been going on here and as will chamberlain explains this slippery slope is pretty slippery here as twitter literally went from censoring alex jones to now the white house press secretary and the new york post in just over a year now why are they doing this well of course no one really knows but i think it's pretty clear that they have a horse in a race that they want winning and as their actions become more egregious more and more people face their wrath they are absolutely out of control and this is outright meddling in our elections but of course let's look at the quote official response to why they're doing this and, and dissect it really quickly here because twitter safety officially released a statement surrounding this particular event and they said that they're doing this because the evidence the emails the photos the news reporting of these photos of these emails were quote illegally obtained yes twitter safety released a statement that in 2008 they established a new policy that prohibits the use and distribution of content that was obtained without authorization. Yes, a very bland, generic, generalized statement meant, of course, to be arbitrarily used like it is right now. Of course, a lot of this stems from the 2016 WikiLeaks release. This is why in 2018, Twitter decided to change their policy, which of course helps them produce an electoral outcome that favors them. And for them to say that they're doing this because the information was obtained illegally is absolute bull crap because when it's the first lady who has her conversation secretly leaked when it's donald trump who has his tax returns secretly leaked twitter doesn't ban any of those articles twitter doesn't ban anyone tweeting about this twitter doesn't stop the url from even being sent privately in messages they don't go full outright orwellian censorship on other aspects that were quote illegally obtained and again this is a backwards asinine justification because it's not only filled with hypocrisy but it's counterintuitive to what journalism is journalism is supposed to publish what powerful entities don't want published Publish. Journalism is not PR for the super rich, for the establishment, for the wealthy that could afford it. No. And for all of this to be destroyed just so their favorite candidate could get elected is 
disheartening and it's sickening because that's clear as day what's happening here because what else is the other explanation here? There isn't any. Biden's campaign staffer even came out and gave more of another two plus two equals five statement surrounding this entire matter, essentially saying that if Twitter decided that this is false, that makes it false. Well, look, um, I, uh, I think Twitter's response to the actual uh, uh, article itself uh, makes clear that these uh, you know, purported allegations are false uh, and they're not true. Uh, and glad to you know to see uh, you know um, social media companies like Twitter taking responsibility to limit misinformation. Uh, uh, Twitter decided it's not true, so it's not true. Because obviously, Twitter and the big tech monopoly should be the supreme leader, god and creator of all that gets to decide what your ears and eyes get to experience. Yes, you don't get to have discernment because Twitter decides the overall truth of everything. Because, you know, nothing could go wrong with billionaires deciding that. Yeah, sorry, this is a little bit ridiculous and it's kind of shameful to see this kind of Orwellian talk being espoused by the Biden campaign during such a critical time when so many important freedoms are on the line. And for this man to do this just shows you how much money actually corrupts an individual to do the most unimaginable, unspeakable things. Again, the page shills here are working overtime to try to muddy the waters of what's actually happening here. The story of how these emails and photos were found is quite intriguing to say the least. There's a lot of people screaming foul play. There's a lot of people screaming that this was a hack. Story of how this computer was actually found could potentially be true, but again, it's worth questioning everything in today's day and age. But it doesn't matter. How can people even know the truth when it's being hidden from them. Also, another important tidbit to understand here, Rudy Giuliani, who is a part of this leaking, is also hinting that there are tens of thousands of emails and that they will be dropped within the next coming days. How will big tech monopolies respond to it will be very critically important to watch. But surely this is a moment where the Joe Biden campaign is being caught with its pants down. They are still doubling down on their lies, which there are now clear emails depicting a totally different picture. We had Joe Biden many times denying that his son's big time paying job at the Ukrainian energy company had anything to do with him denied even meeting the heads of that energy company and now there's emails to Hunter Biden from the head of those companies telling them thank you for meeting with his father Joe Biden according to the emails that were released there's also this very damning video of Joe Biden bragging how he got a Ukrainian prosecutor fired who was investigating that particular energy company. I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting a billion dollars. I said, you're not getting a billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> got fired. And... And a larger question needs to be asked here with Joe Biden's son being, uh, let's just say, exposed to certain chemicals and not being in a right state of mind. What do you think is going to happen with information about his son that could be used by other foreign leaders? Again, a lot of implications, a lot of data, a lot of photos, a lot of emails that we should rightfully be able to look at, to investigate, and to make up our own minds. All of those things are worth thinking about and then discussing. Concerning. There's a big element here that people are forgetting and they're totally missing, and that is the fact that human beings have the right to actually decide what is right for them by discernment. That's the big word here that a lot of people are missing here. We don't need a big daddy overlord deciding what words are harmful to us or if they hurt us. There's been a big agenda to push that kind of rationales, immoral, ninifying kind of thinking, and it's ridiculous. It's one of the reasons why we've been calling it out here from the very beginning, because they want to be your daddy. They want to be your overlord. They want to control every little aspect of your existence. And I refuse to do that. If you refuse as well, share this video and sign up on that email list. I, I can't I, I can't say this enough. It's more important than ever. 
sign up on that email list. Send this to your friends. Send this to your family members. Let them know that free speech is under attack and it could only be destroyed. It could only be ended if all of us allow it to be. We have powers in numbers. They wouldn't be censoring and destroying information if they weren't afraid of it. Your voices are more important than ever. It's one of the reasons why we're still here. And this is why I love you guys. Stay tuned for hopefully hopefully we're here tomorrow um yeah we'll, we'll, we'll see stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org